What are these things? Seriously, what... What are they? Are they rabbits? I can't move them without biting them. I guess I can a little bit. Can I hit them? I can. Oh, there are rabbits. Okay, now they're moving. There we go. Okay, they weren't moving before. That was really strange. Anyway, hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Okami. That kind of, Those bunnies threw me off a little bit. They were, like, glitching or something? But anyway, last episode, we met my favorite character, and that character is not Madam Fawn. Not Madam Fawn, definitely. It, it was Waka, Tau Master Waka. So that was, that was very nice. He's an awesome guy. Not someone I'd want to invite to my graduation, but he was pretty nice. And this episode, we're going to be exploring Ogta Forest. Once again, those bunnies threw me off a little bit. Uh, before we get started, and actually, I'm going to head on over here. Because we're going to start over here. Actually, you know what? No, wait. Before it turns today, I'm going to dig this up. Because this probably has something good in it. Good, it wasn't a stray bead, because there is not a stray bead here. It is a unique bead, or whatever it is. Dragonfly bead. And now it's daytime, so I probably wouldn't have seen that. But anyway, uh, before we get started, I'm just going to go and head over here. This video is going to be mostly uh, just exploring Ogta Forest, just in case you're wondering. Although, if we get it done time, uh, in a timely manner, which I'll try to do so, then uh, we can do some other stuff. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and pause. Go over to... Uh, I can't upgrade anything, okay. I just wanted to see so that you guys kind of know the values for things. So yeah, we need 140 praise to upgrade our health. Although, I think I want to upgrade ink pots first. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to save up 300 praise and get uh, a an upgrade to the astral pouch since I think I need that the most. So just, just so you guys know how, what the goal is. So anyway, let's go ahead and go through this area. Um, we are working from the top down, so I guess we should start up here, although eh, we can start the, the entrance in a little bit. Um, what we want to do now is just jump around and look for stuff, because there is stuff around here like this. This very beautiful thing that reminds me of Wind Waker. That's a giant bud. It's a strange plant that engulfs buried treasure treasure it brings uh, wait what oh that engulfs buried treasure and brings it up that's what he was saying but no one's ever been able to open one of these things it's said that only the gods know a special way to make it open you wouldn't have to know would you well power slash no it made a cool noise but that's not the answer cherry bomb clearly the answer not a heart cherry bomb Come on, Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb. Blow up. There we go. No, that's not it either. The answer, the correct answer, is C. For those of you playing at home, it's Bloom. Bloom. <laughs> yeah, I'd fail at Bloom. And from that, we get a Holy Bone S. Kind of nice. Not super good, but not horrible. Oh, uh, what about from this one? Surely there's something better. Oh, there is. A lacquerware set. Each piece of this Japanese lacquerware is said to be unique. Okay, that's interesting. Did we just get that a moment ago? I think I might have read Dragonfly Beats, but it was actually the lacquerware. I don't know. Uh, in this one, there is a thing. Glass beads. Okay, nice. A lot of glass that we're collecting. Apparently, glass is super valuable. Well, I don't know. I guess I guess it would be because how did how would they make glass back then? I mean, you need to take the was it silica out of it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. You guys should, if you guys know how how to make glass back in like the, I don't know, let's just say the 5th, 1300s. How you make glass back then? Tell me, because I'd like to know. I wonder if you can do it like at home. That'd be neat. Obtain coral fragment. Okay, nice. There's another thing. I'm ignoring NPCs for now, just because we have bigger fish, fish to fry. Oh, there it is. Okay, I was wondering. I saw one. Actually, wait. There's a buried treasure right here. I saw it right out of the corner of me, uh, my peepers. Uh, let's go ahead and line that up and dig. And inside is a... Oh! Steel Soul Sake. Very, very cool. Okay, I like... I'm, I'm a fan of that. I, I love defense in video games. If you guys... Actually, I've never really played a game where the, this was a thing. But in video games, 
I like defense and also steel fist. That's cool. Whenever I play a game, I pretty much always go to defense and like sniper edging. Even though, actually, this is oh my word. I I just realized this a couple weeks ago and it scared me. I have never ever played a first person shooter. Is that sad? I know it, it's so sad. I don't I don't know how I avoided doing it, but like, I, how did I not do that? Deep Abyss, okay? This is the famous Deep Abyss of Agatha Forest. Okay, let's talk to this this kid right here, fishing. Kokari. Oh, poor Ume. I wonder if he's okay. Oh, hello there, doggy. You all alone too? I'm Kokari. Pleased to meet you. Boy of the Forest. Kokari. What? Uh, this? This is my fishing pole. Actually, there's no fishing line or hook on it right now. Why are you holding over the water? But there's a reason for that. Okay, good. There better be. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd say, uh, you, you need a different kind of coat on, buddy. <laughs> One that has straighter edges. Uh, my dog Ume and I were exploring a secret, a secret place the other, uh, the other day. An ancient building known as the Suta Ruins, okay? We'd never be able to get into the ruins until we found a key deep in the forest. But when we went in, we heard a horrible roar from deep within. I didn't waste any time getting out of there. I locked the entrance to the ruins and hightailed it home. I thought Ume had followed me, but he was nowhere to be found. I, it seems he needs glasses as well. I bet he's trapped back at those ruins. He must be crying, all scared and alone. If you know where he is, then why don't you go rescue him? This is no time to be fishing. Good point, Isun. I didn't think of that. Yes, well, there's a reason for that as well. You see, on my way from home, on my way home from the ruins, uh, I fell near the water's edge, and in went the key. Oh snap, that's bad. I tried my hardest to fish it back out, but I lost all my line and hooks. All I have now is this pole. Wah! That's that's extremely sad. I tried my hardest to fish out the key to the ruins, but I lost all my line and hooks. All I have now is this pole. Wow, I said this before. What What did I need to do? Uh, oh, yes. Man, this kid's a crybaby. <laughs> Give him a good headbutt, Ami. Maybe that'll straighten him out. Well, we talked about a straight jacket, but I guess this works too. Ouch! Now cut that out. There's nothing I hate more than a crybaby. You were the one who left your dog in these, those dangerous ruins, so you got so you got to do whatever it takes to get the key and go help him. But but but, listen here, kid. Fishing's all about the attitude. Attitude. There's nothing you can't catch with the right attitude. Fish, babes, whatever. It all can be yours. <laughs> oh my word, that's awesome. Go ahead, act like you're having fun. We'll watch. <laughs> Fish, babes, oh my word, Isun. I love that guy. Boy, this murky water sure gives me the creeps. People call it Deep Abyss because it, they can't see the bottom. But that's not why these waters are famous. Legend has it a humongous fish swallowed the moon reflected on the surface of the water. No one knows if the legend is true. But to this day, the moon never rises here in Agata Forest. Give the fairy tales a rest, will you, kid? They're so gloomy. Think more positive. Have fun. Fun! Okay, Ami. Let's use that celestial brush of yours to help him out. There should be some fishing line on the, his pole, but there's not. Well, just make some by drawing a, a line from the pole to the fish. I wish we could fish like that normally. Okay, so it says draw a line connecting the fishing pole to the fish, get them to bite. Once you're hooked, then move the control stick in the opposite direction of the fish's movement. If you pull too hard, the power gauge will move in the red area and you will lose the fish after the life gauge depletes. Because apparently, if the fish pulls too hard, Kokuri will die. Apparently, he's, he's asthmatic. Keep a close eye on the fish and don't overdo it. So we see multiple fish here. Let's draw a line... Uh, to that one. That's the weirdest line ever. Whoa, did I actually get a bite with no line? <laughs> Careful now, kid. Don't pull with all your might. You'll just wear yourself out. Just reel it in nice and slow. So, this is sort of like a quick time event. Uh, and when... Oh, man, I failed. Uh, when, when they're... 
what you want to do is basically pull in the opposite direction that they're moving, like it said, and once you get the prompt to shake the the Wiimote, shake it and then power slash them. You caught kill a fish. This is Animal Crossing. Now we can sell it for 800 bells. Uh, let's get the big one over there. Big one. Whoa, did I actually get a fish? Or a bit bite? Okay, so let's pull this way. Uh, not too hard. Not too hard. Keep it. Keep it in the green. Shake. Power slash. What kind of fish is this? Catfish? It's Plek! You guys probably don't know what that is. When I was a kid... Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, when I was a kid... I had, we got a, uh, a fishing, fish tank, and we had a Placostomus. For those of you who don't know, that's sort of like a big, that's a big fish, wow. It's sort of like a big, uh, catfish, and basically, like, it was eating the other fish. It was really weird, they're not supposed to do that, but we called it Plecky. <laughs> I love, <laughs> that's not the fishing story. <laughs> <laughs> that you're, you're probably used to hearing. If you want... Well, I'll, I'll tell you a better one if we get a chance. Wow, that's a big one. Hmm? Hey! the That's the ruins key! It popped right out of the mouth of that big ol' fish. Now I can go save Ume over at the ruins. I'm gonna go all the way in, the, in this, uh, all the way in this time. No running away from me now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> hey, give that back. I like how Ami just walks up and takes it. <laughs> Good move, Ami. We can't have the kid getting hurt on your watch. Well, what are we waiting for? We got a lost dog to find in Suda Ruins. Uh, I don't, I don't want this key. Also, he's trying to chase us. Can I just leave the key here? Please say yes. Can I just leave it there? Please? I want to just leave it there. Okay. We can just leave it here. Hopefully. Let's talk to him. I can't take my eyes off you for a second. Well, at least I have the key now. I better go rescue Ume. To the ruins! He won't actually go to the ruins, will he? That'd be funny if he did and it gave me game over, but... I don't think he is, so I'm just going to continue on and explore, and then by the end of the video, we should probably be done. So while I restore this, I'll tell you a fishing story that is not mine, it's just a friend of mine's. Uh, when I was younger, I, ha I, had a, I had a buddy, and of course I did. Everyone probably has a buddy. If you don't, I'm your buddy, because I'm your pal. Anyway, but he, uh, he went fishing once, and he caught a fish, he was reeling it in, right? And an eagle came by scooped up the fish that he was reeling in and started taking it away. And he had to cut the line because otherwise he would he would have pretty much probably killed the eagle because he would have brought it into the water and drowned it. So yeah, that's his fishing story. That's it's cool, but also kind of sad cuz he didn't get the fish. But it was it was pretty cool. It's something to I guess tell your grandkid, uh, grandkids. But yeah, that's pretty neat. As for fishing stories for me, I guess I don't... I don't think I have any. I've been fishing multiple times, but I don't have that many fishing stories. Anyway, uh, Exorcism Slip S. I got on a tangent there, which is actually not bad, because I wasn't really doing anything that merited me explaining it. Circle. Circle. There we go. I can just picture, um... Ooh, wooden bear. Though carved from wood, it is as fearsome as the real thing. I can just picture Ami, you know how, uh, you know how you, so you can have trouble drawing the circle with the brush? Well, I can just picture Ami just, like, being confused, because the tails are brush, right? So I can picture her circling, we can feed these birds, circling the, uh, her tail around, being like, oh, oh, I can't do it, oh, and, and everybody's just standing there like, what are you doing? Because they can't actually see the brush, they just see her moving her tail, but that, that's kind of funny. I can just picture her doing that. Okay, uh, we have this area over here. We have water, which will jump in. And we have someone laying on the ground over here. Wait, is that Susano? Oh, it is! I didn't... How'd you get... What? what? Hmm, not you again, Fido. Tuskusk. Mu why must you always dog my footsteps? Ah, oh, I'm busy per uh, practicing a new secret technique. You see, 
A terrible monster lurks in Taka Pass beyond this forest. It goes by the name of the Crimson something or other. And it's rumored to have 100 followers on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> what do you mean the Crimson something or other? The name slipped my mind, that's all. Anyway, I must rid Taka Pass of that terrible monster before it harms anyone else. But first, I must practice my ultimate secret technique. Then again, a bridge to Taka Pass is out, so why, br so why rush? I have no fear. Since I, once I master that technique, I shall venture, for venture forth to slay the beast, even if I have to swim through the, 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 those turbid waters. Now leave me be, you cur. I have some serious training to do. Okay, well, I didn't even know Susano was here, so... Dude, you should train with those monsters, I guess. Have have fun. Don't get drunk. Have a nice Christmas. Bye. <laughs> I, I really don't know what else to say. Except deer. Man, a deer. Uh, 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 biggies. <laughs> I really, really like how last uh, last time we were in Shinshu Field, I was like, well, I'm going to be saving all the animal feeding for uh, the co for the end slate because that's a great idea. And in Kamiki Village, I was like, you know what? Next time, I'll save it for the end slate. This time, I don't even think. I just do it and just don't even say anything. I'm just like, oh, okay. There, there, there are things. I'm going to actually cut these out. While being reflectatory in that uh, that sequence where you feed him and the, the thing circles around, I realized that it kind of seems like I have no focus for this episode, but I actually do. Like... I'm, I'm not just wandering around. I'm going at about it very metho methodically. If you look at the map, we have gone through this area in a, uh, a counter... No. Clockwise fashion. So yeah, I, I am going through this in a sensible manner. It just doesn't really seem like it. I'm just, I'm just talking and wandering around, but I'm not actually. So if you guys are wondering, I'm not. Infinity Stone? Nice. Okay, I remember, though, even though I was going through it methodically. I did miss something over here. Over here. Um, and my recording's being weird. Live. There we go. Sorry about that. My recording's being really, really sketchy. There we go. I don't normally correct it in, in the actual thing, but I apologize for that. Okay, we do have a stray bead, and it is here somewhere. I just need to power slash this grass, and I can see it better. I really wish it were nighttime, and I hadn't drawn the sun. Uh, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, we have a stray bead. It's right here, just on this little shoreline beach cliff, which I have no idea how that works out, because beaches cannot be on cliffs, because, like, this sand would all fall down. I don't know how that works. But anyway, there's a stray bead behind uh, Karade's house. Karade is the guy that we met last episode up there, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, we talked to him. If we didn't, I'll talk to him in just a second. But I'm actually going to go in his house because I forgot because I was telling my um, fishing stories. Okay, so inside here we have some food, roasted meat. Uh, roasting has enhanced the flavor. Phil's astral pouch. So we have some stuff here. Roasted fish. They're big on barbecue. Uh, spoilers. It actually says in the Bible that God loves barbecue. I'm not, I'm not kidding at all. Well... I guess I'll talk about it because I brought it up. In in the Bible, there is a there's a one passage that says you know it after uh, Noah gets off the ark he makes a sacrifice right, and he said and he makes the sacrifice and he, you know if you don't know what a sacrifice is basically uh, you can do it with like a pyre you know you can you can burn the the animal I don't think alive yeah you don't burn it alive but you burn it dead. And after you like slit, slit the throat, <laughs> so much for this being a clean channel. But anyway, you you burn it and you burn it because it's like it's a sacrifice to the Lord, right? But in the passage it says Noah made a sacrifice to the Lord, and God smelled the pleasing aroma, and it he said it was good or something like that. Also, there's something buried here. But yeah, so. True fact, uh, true story. God loves barbecue. And there's another stray bead while I was uh, talking about <laughs> barbecue. They're up on this cliff next to the Suta Ruins entrance. That is that cliff face over there. Next to this cracked wall, there is a buried chest with thingies, with stray bead. Uh, a stray bead. And inside here, I'm really curious, because I thought the stray bead was here, actually. 
Uh, we have the statue, and a pillar, and nothing else. Okay, we have something on top of the pillar, but we cannot get up there yet, so I guess we can't do anything here yet? I'm looking for a buried chest, but nothing's coming to my, my sight vision, so I guess we can leave. Okay, I think that is almost it. It's not it. It's it for this little area right here, this little platinsula. That's a new word. Uh, if we just swim across here by this waterfall, not be sucked down the waterfall. We have a demon gate here, which I'll take care of in just one moment. Just I'm going to stall because we have a special thing over here, right here, right here, right here. Near these signs that say straight to Suta Ruins, right to Taka Pass, which talk past somewhere where we haven't gone yet we have a treasure chest which has a scroll in it battle tips okay but what we have is this dude mr pig face dude which is straight he has a very bad tendency to disappear he needs to get that checked out in the uh the drive through the drive through doctor's office but anyway what he has is a demon fang if you see at his hip he has a demon fang also I don't think he has hardly any moving animation, so he's like a statue. But if we talk to him, he'll say, let's see, I need to come up with a voice for these. Uh, I think that works. Oh, how funny. I didn't think I'd seen a white wolf before. What's your name? Gulp, gulp. What? Come on, tell me your name, gulp, gulp. You may only be a wolf, but manners are manners. Gulp, gulp. The name's Isun, and this, and this furball here is a Matarasu. That's a bit of a mouthful. Let's go with Chalky, shall we? Gulp, gulp. As for me, I'm the infamous fame trainer. Fang trainer. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Yes, I am the great Kiba. The great fang, fang trader. Kiba. Gulp, gulp. I don't know what it is with my gulp, gulp. It's like he's drinking sake or he's using that demon fang as like a, as his sip. He's had some the Arizona drink. Now then, Chalky, you know what you know about monster leftovers, right? You know what what you get when you defeat a monster? I'm talking about the demon fangs. Gulp gulp. Demon fangs. All you need to do is tan those monsters' hides, and they drop a, a demon fang just before they disappear. The aristocrats love to have them as a symbol of power. They'll pay any price you care to ask. Gulp gulp. So then, Chalky, gulp. Got any of them on you? Gulp gulp gulp. Hey, <laughs> hey, naturally I don't expect you to give them to me for free. Gulp, 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 gulp. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a turkey. <laughs> I, the Grey Kiba, have collected treasures from all over Nippon. We can do a swap. <laughs> a swap. <laughs> the voice crack there. Trade demon fangs for treasures. Yes, this is the store that I was talking about, where you can use our 77 demon fangs, oh snap, to get awesome things, like Traveler's Charms which raises your godhood one level, or godly charms. It raises our godhood to maximum capacity, Batman. Also, we have the golden peach, which fills the astral pouch instantaneously. This is one of the few foods in the game that acts as an item and also fills the astral pouch instantly. So it's technically not a food, but you do eat it, so that's nice. Then we have some other things. We have specialty things, which is what I'm going to be buying today, because this is a specialty store. <laughs> uh, we have the Golden Lucky Cat, which draws money and other valuables near. That is super useful, which includes food. So if you power slash a field of roses, <laughs> and there are a bunch of watermelons, right? I don't know why watermelons come out of roses, but anyway, they will instantly fly to you without you having to walk up and collect them. Same with battles. So, you know, there are a couple times in battles where I have to stop fighting dudes because I need to grab the demon fang before it disappears. That is gone with this wonderful golden lucky cat for $59.95. So that's really, really nice. Uh, I need to prioritize, prioritize what I'm getting. The wooden mat, uh, basically, you can convert cash into health. So if you stay dormant long enough, you know how Matarasu will sleep? While she sleeps, your cash will slowly go away, and your health will slowly go up. And there will be a cool little animation, but I don't have to explain this, since I'll get this at one point in the game. Uh, next is the peace bell. Oh my word. This is so useful. It makes it so demon scrolls will no longer chase you. So good. So good. 
then you don't have to stun them, then you, you don't have to worry about what their stun thing is, what you have to do to stun them. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this. Just, no no joke, buying this. The, pe uh, the Peace Bell. I thought it said Peach Bell for a second, because Peach is above it. And then I'm going to buy the Golden Lucky Cat. I'm holding off on the wood mat just right now because I have a bunch of healing items because I have a ton of money and I don't really need to be healed yet, though there will be certain points in the game where I, I do. So I will be getting the wooden mat. I will be getting all the items, the perma items that they sell in Demon Fang trade trade places or swap swap meet guys. I guess we'll call them that. Uh, Golden Lucky Cat, I'll guy, I'll, yeah, I'll guy that. I'll buy that. And we have seven Demon Fangs left. I have one Traveler's Charm. Do I really want more? I think I'm going to hold out, honestly. Because now that I have the the Rosary, the Devout Beads, uh, I don't really need Traveler's Charm or Godly Charms. Because uh, the cool thing about Rosaries is that they can rack up Godhood super quickly. Because it counts as a combo or consecutive hits without taking damage. And basically, when you have when you have the rosary, since you do so many hits, it's just amazing how good you can get. So I'm going to hold off on that. And that is it. However, I have one more thing to do, and hopefully my recording's not glitching, since it it was uh, having fun with that earlier. Let me go and <laughs> close this window. I don't typically do it, do this during recording, so if this is your first time watching me, I don't I don't do this. Yeah, I don't do it. And I open the window back up. Great. Well, anyway, what I was saying was with those new items, we actually have to equip them. There are special items that you get in the equipments menu. You can see this divider here from the weapons. And what we want to do is you have three spaces to equip the equipables. And what we can do is just equip one in that spot and equip one in that spot. And that's very nice. There we go. Uh, done. Very nice. Okay, now before I go, because this video is te this episode is clo is ending off. Um, what I want to do is I want to go over here to this demon scroll and end out the episode by going here, just so I can show off my new item, my new uh, my golden lucky cat, because that's super useful. Also, I I just feel like doing a battle to end out the episode because we're at 29 minutes, and I th I think that for Oh, episodes of Okami now, they're going to be about 30 minutes long. I know that's pretty long for an episode, but I just feel like 25 minutes isn't just, it's just a sliver too short. I just, it's just something I, I have a feeling about, because so many of these episodes are not 25 minutes long. They're, they're 30, 35, 40, sometimes even 50 minutes long, I think one episode was, not the first one, but later on they were like 50? At least my recording time. Anyway, but I just feel like 30 minutes is a good next step, so I don't feel like I'm doing too much. And I want to do this. So, yeah, I think episodes are going to be 30 minutes long from now on, and then Saturdays are probably going to be 35. I just, I feel like this is, this is going to work better. So, I may move it back after a certain amount of time, but I just, I think I like this setup a little bit more. So, anyway, I'm going to end out the episode by going into battle. Battle, as the guy in in uh, Mario Party says. So we have two of these guys. Let me go ahead and defeat them. Start off with a power slash on one, and go ahead and hit him, and hit him. Uh, what does he throw? Oh, he throws fa fin fangs. Okay, I'm gonna do that. There we go. Uh, let me go ahead and hit him. No. Uh, no, 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 no! Uh, yeah, this is the really bad thing about dead fish. You can't get the floral fish finishers on them, like, ever. It's horrible. I don't like it at all. Uh, can I get it on this guy? No, I can't. He's gonna have to die. Yeah, so I missed the floral finishers, but, yeah, that's nice. Uh, you can see that when I get money, it automatically flies to me. Oh, and, uh, I thought the battle's over. We have this guy. And I'm actually not... Yeah, I'm going to defeat him the, nor the new way, because we haven't, I haven't shown that a lot. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this, and splot, counter, pretty much insta-death, and done. Oh, I missed the floral finisher on, uh, rosaries, 
Yeah, they they make you miss floral finishers. I'm not counting those dead fish as I'm not blaming the dead fish miss floral finishers on the the rosaries, but I'm I'm blaming other stuff on that. So yeah. So that's going to be it for this episode. We have one more thing to do next time. Uh, one more side, quote unquote side questy thing to do, but and and it actually involves this this ball right in front of me. Ball rolling physics for the win. So yeah, next episode we're going to be doing that. But then after that, I think we're done the area, and we can go into the Suta ruins after grabbing the key from Kokari. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Next time in Okami, uh, we're going to be doing just what I said. I release new episodes of Okami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes, longer than what I had before. And I'll see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Okami. Thanks for watching, by the way. If I didn't say that already. Okay, in the end slate, I'm going to feed these monkeys. Feed them meat, because that's super creepy. <laughs>